So I guess I should start. I guess I should start talking now. Um, all right. Well, first, I'm Leora Wenger. Um, I work for the New York MTA, and then on the side, I um, I have these uh, digital ocean droplets that I started, so I could mostly it to begin with. It was so I could put my own sites on there, and then some other sites join. But um, yeah, so I'm now I'm trying to learn some very back endy server stuff that I've never learned before. So. I had a whole bunch of questions, so I have a slideshow of all my questions. So I guess I'm, I have to do share screen. Let me put my, what I'm gonna share here first. How does this work? Okay, this seems easier if I put this on the screen, but then put the zoom on this screen and pick, where's the share button? Oh my God, I'm so used to using um, share screen. Oh, it's on the bottom now, okay. Yeah, no, at work, we started using Teams, so it was like a different, this one, here we go, share. Okay, um, put it on share. Whoops. Oh, I don't know, why isn't this working? No, I don't want share, I want slideshow. Here we go. All right, that's just the fancy title that I gave it. CPU running high. Because uh, every few days I get this email that says my, my the, my CPU is running high on my digital droplet. But the truth is, it could be that it just doesn't have that much memory. So I'm not really sure. So that's why I'm asking here. Okay, so what's the problem? So I have these two droplets that are that have Drup, uh, virtual hosts with uh, WordPress, and some of them just have like index.html, and that's it. And I get these email alerts that I can turn off when the sites go over 700, 70%, and I can set the 70%, but... Um, but I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. So like I've been told, okay, do this, do this, do this. Like, but I'm not really sure what the errors look like. So I'm trying to figure out what to fix and what to do with all the logs. And I'm proud of myself that I finally figured out how to run a cron job and how to put together a bash file, a bash script. Okay, let's see. So this is an example of what um, the graphs look like on DigitalOcean. And after I show these slides, I'm gonna actually put the DigitalOcean dashboard on so you can actually see it. Uh, but this is an example of, you can see the CPU at, this might've been 70, 755 this morning. You see it, it kind of goes high at some point. The question is why? And is it something I need to worry about? Why does this happen every few days or every few hours or whatever? All right, so this is an example of how the alerts work. And this is what ended up there is, um, uh let's see if i click on that yes okay so this is what, what basically this is way back in december i asked a question i've been getting email alerts um so they answered and somebody gave me this really short bash script a little short script but somebody gave me a much longer one so i decided to use the longer one um and I finally figured out how to do it, but then I was like, well, what do I do with all that information? Let me go back to my slides. Okay, so nope, that doesn't get back, back to my slides. If I go here, that, there we go. All right, so here's an example of, um, this is the output from that bash script. But the question is, what in the world am I looking at? This, oh, this is actually the second page because the screenshots, I can show you a live one. But that's, if anybody can tell me what I'm looking at. So here, here's the first page. Um, so I noticed in some of them, it says KB avail and it says zero sometimes. So that didn't sound good. Anybody wanna like, uh, can anybody tell me what I'm looking at? And that's really, this is really the question. This is like, I get an alert and i'm not really sure what it means so here at this one this was interesting at this one a whole bunch of ips were connected so does that have something to do with it you have are you keeping an access log you're using apache it looks like yeah um have you checked like how many requests you received within the time frame where the CPU is high versus normal? Well, so, I mean, I, all, I, all I did was set up this script because I'm not okay. really sure what I should check for. 
Um, I should do a different script, like and and check for what you're telling me, because I, I mean I can log in and and type some stuff in to the actual console. Yeah, well, I mean I would almost want to graph that or just or do a count of how many requests you were handling per time interval. I mean if right, like so. It, I don't, is it happening at a consistent time of day or it's just ha no. happening? No, right unfortunately, it's usually happening at night. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's every few days. Like, I think like two nights ago, I got two of them. And then for a whole bunch of days, I got none. Yeah, I mean. Usually at, late at night. I would check. I mean, so one possibility is it's like someone's crawler right that's like indexing the site for search engines and it's maybe not being particularly nice um and so you might check like the ips that you're getting requests from around the time and see if they mac back to like a known crawler um, oh right i was thinking that like one of the things i'm doing is i'm noting whether they're you know like a hair all these different ips so how, so then i guess the question is do i take those ips and find out if they're bad ips yeah, or if they're, I mean, you can't really do it. I mean, I mean, it doesn't look like they're, it's not like they're doing it throughout the day, right? It's a short stretch. Right. It's always like, it, it always seems to be for like five to 15 minutes and then it's yeah. done. Sort of, that's my main, let me see. A lot of these you have, are, what, I guess another question would be, I mean, is this a, like a site that you want to be in search indexes? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a lot of it's my blog with all my paintings on it. And I started okay. it back in 2007. And this is back before I was really doing very much work work. So I used to just kind of talk to people. And then uh, more recently, I just been doing a lot of painting and I just want to share my paintings. So mm -hmm. I, ha I have a, um, a development site where I'm supposed to be writing about code, but somehow I kind of lost interest in doing that when I'm spending all my day coding. So <laughs> surprise, surprise. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, what is yeah, that so, site? So is I'm that keeping a track of these site? IPs at the bottom. The IPs are usually when there's more, um, if it, when it says these IPs are connected, that's usually when the, there's um, one of these spikes. Yeah. Have you tried looking up any of the IPs? Not yet. So, um, so, so where would I look them up? Um, I mean, I don't have a brilliant answer. I would usually try who is. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess this is why people play big bucks to these companies that, that track all these different IPs for you. Yeah. Like with who is a lot of times it'll, it'll be able to look up from the DNS, like right. what, what provided that maps back to. Okay. Um, it might be informative or it might not. It might be like right. Verizon Home Internet, which is not very helpful, or it might right. be- Right, or, or it might, might be, be somebody's Bing. like PO box <laughs> or anonymous name. Yeah. Oh, oh, here was another question. This this is on the one that I call my dev site, the first drop that I started. I get this PHP syntax or unexpected carrot and etc. PHP and I didn't, had no idea what to do with that. Well, what's happening on that line? Uh, oh, I mean, should I go open it up and see? Yeah, we could do that. It's line 389. Uh, so, um, here, let me go get let me get a console. This is on the dev site, right? So let me show you what it looks like. All right. Oh, do we have to? Yeah, we if can't I, see what you're doing. You can't see this because it's in Brave. So I have to switch the, the share button, right? I guess. I think. Yeah, if you didn't Please share there. your whole, you didn't share your whole desktop. Right. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So hold shift to select multiple windows. Here. Let's see what this works. Okay. All right. Whoops. Where did it go? Now, okay. So what did it say? It said, uh,
No, Apache 2 probably, right? What was it? No, it's ETC slash, no. So this is like back at the back end for those of you who've never seen Apache like running server stuff. But I'm not sure I'm seeing the window. A bit lost yeah, you're not. I moved it to the other everything. screen for a minute. Sorry. No, it's I all just, good. Um, I'm just like, I'm used to two screens and <laughs> okay, now you can see it again? Yep. All right, so now, what line was it? Th but this doesn't have numbers. If I do more, how do I get to 389? Oh, you uh, open it with them or something. Yeah. What? Open it with them. VI. Them. Okay. VI. Let's try this. Oh, uh, how come this tool doesn't have numbers? numbers? So do colon. Wait. Uh, colon what? Set space number. Set space number. No. Wow. Well, that's a good one to know. That works. Yeah. So how do I get to what was the uh, number? No, just two colon 389, and I'll give you 389. Two call, okay. yeah, two colon 389. What I do you need that set? I thought it usually just works. Oh, maybe so. Oh. Oh, uh, this is a redirect. Um that it doesn't like doesn't something. seem like it belongs in that file. Oh. So I could just take it out later. Or put a semicolon at the beginning of it. Oh, I could do it right now, right? Do it, yeah. do it live. I could do, I, I could just do, I could put a comment, right? Uh, this isn't any file, so you need a semicolon for a comment. Oh, a semicolon? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's what the semicolons are. Okay. All right. So. Escape, WQ, and then should be. Yeah, that. All right. So now I guess does it does have to like do some kind of pseudo Apache start or something for it to is, take is effect? Apache running mod PHP? Or are you running uh, PHP FPM? I think what was the second one that you said F FPM or look at FPM. Your process Probably. List. Yeah. I actually I saw a lot of things that said FPM might affect um like your server in some ways it can slow things down unless you change x y and z so but i well just do like a, i said do, i'm new to this back end stuff so just do ps space dash ef like that yeah um no so it looks like you've just got a lot of apache running you don't have a PHP F FPM. Oh, well, okay. Processes right. running. I guess that's good. One less thing. Uh, it's, you know, variation of the same thing. Yes, yeah, so you might have to restart Apache to see the change. Right. I think it was like sudo something. I, I'm trying to remember the, the restart Apache command. It was, do I have it in here? Um, it was. Um, a lot of times it's service. Or, um yeah no or at um, or at the end the apache oh, here. no 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 that's it that, there's so many different commands that i like keep i'll look it up later that's okay all right that's a good answer to that one that helps that solved that problem where, there was another one in here um it says https q123.usimages.p it's not found now, did that show up when i just started this let me just see if it that resolved itself. Maybe it was, um, what did I have at the top of this when I first started? No, this is, if I exit and I start again, reload. So maybe it's not giving me that error anymore. Uh, all right, let's see what, what other questions I had because I don't see that error anymore. Oh, this was just another way of um, VM stat S. Uh, this is um, what am I looking at? 
question. <laughs> it said, do this. So this total memory is 981. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Well, it's almost a gig. It's not, it's not a little. But your um, free man memory is not that much. Yeah, you don't have very much free. Okay, because 720. Um, you may what be running of... too many Apache processes or giving them too much memory in PHP. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, I presume you're not expecting like a ton of traffic at, on this. Not right now. Not site. really. No. Um, it would just take it down. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody go to this URL and see if someone fits this up. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I would, I would look at your Apache settings probably and figure out like how many, like, how, how do I look at Apache settings? So like, here's the, um, this is so the graphs they like, give me, but I don't know if these are all useful. No, those don't show Apache oh, okay. settings. Right. Um, so, uh, usually something in Etsy, Etsy, Etsy Apache or Etsy HTTPD. Well, let me look yeah. at the, the, the other site. I'm going to go to this one, see what we get. Right. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking like if. If it doesn't have that much memory, should I pay more and get the the next you know higher price? Because I'm paying kind of one of the low price for this. So, I mean, one way to solve unless, the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it depends if you expect more than a couple of people to be looking to site at the same time. I see. So it sounded like it sounds like I should like pay for the the ten dollar version instead of the six dollar version. Or optimize I mean, what's running, and then you don't have to yeah. do that. But yeah, how, do I, how do I, okay, so what, so how do I look up, what were you saying? I should look up something in particular. I would look at the Apache settings. Um, so how do I see it? Just generally speaking, like, so it's an Etsy and it depends oh, on Etsy whether is it's. ETC. That's, oh, it's so funny. See, I've never heard it pronounced. It's so funny. I think that's how the people say it. No, it could be. It's like, oh my God, there's tons of things in there. There are. Uh, maybe show your window. Yes, that's where like all your like. Oh, oh, I have to are. share window for this. This is like not, that's right. It's a whole separate screen again. All right, new share. Right, because I opened up a new screen. Okay, there we go. Whoop, where did it go? Disappeared on me. Oh, here it is. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, you've got an uh, Apache T directory. So, go in there. Okay. So, um, oh, CD to Apache 2. Yeah. And see what you have in there. Okay. Not as much. Not as much. So, it's sites available probably in like that where Apache my two important com. sites are. What's that? Sites available is what, like, uh, I go to that one a lot. I mean, it's, yeah, but it's probably either the Apache 2 com for the conf enabled, one of those two things is going to have the, what you care about. Uh -huh. So That's like, cool. like more of the Apache 2 com, but it's probably in there. Oh. Conf enabled or, yeah. That's that one over. Uh, serve CGI bin. You probably don't actually want that. <laughs> um, it's mods enabled. That sounds important. Yeah, though that's the modules enabled. So that would be like your mod PHP. Uh, So you got a bunch of stuff in there, probably a bunch of them you don't actually need. Um, but like, I, I doubt you're using the auto index feature, for example. Which one? Um, auto index. Auto index. 
It's not like something you have that a WordPress. Directory. It, it, I mean, the, these all sites are WordPress, so it's not something WordPress uses. No. Okay. That's just something that is, that's like, so if you have a directory of files under the doc root, the server can present to the end user, like essentially a directory listing. Okay. It's usually something you try to. So how, how, how would one, do I just delete it or do I have to do something else? We'll do LH dash L. You see, these are all some symbolic links. Um, um, so there's a, um, Uh, what is it called? Um, like A2 Dismod? Is that the one? Maybe Kathy knows. I, in fact, do not know. Okay. Oh, you're there. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, so there's a, there's a couple commands called like A, start typing A2 and then tab and see if you get something. No. No. Did I type it right? Nothing. Or um, I forget. Basically, basically, all you have to do is remove the symbolic link and restart Apache. But there's there's a proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, well, can I look it up somewhere? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, a two. Try a two disk mod. A two. Whoops. A two disk. Dis D I S M O D. No, DIS, like disable. Oh, DIS. It's for Apache 2 disable module, dismod. A2 dismod? Like yeah, that? just type that and see if it. Oh, here. Yeah, so just hit Control C now. You don't need it. But yeah, so you could, if you choose one of those, right, like it'll, it'll disable it. Uh huh. Um, you may have to do sudo for that to actually work. You're not in there as root. Um, and yeah, like I usually the, have to do sudo. Right, and then there should be an A two N E N mod for enabling modules, which would turn on one of the ones. Yeah, A two E N sounds familiar because. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. But I don't want to turn something on right now. Right. Okay. So, um, but the main thing I would want to look at is that Apache two conf. Uh, that's up one level, so CD up one level, and then look at Apache. Comp. Wait, wait, wait. Go up one level. So Which look one? at the Apache two com file. Just no, no. Yeah, just oh, oh. For it or. Um, oh. uh, so a lot of this is probably worth reading because it tells you how it all works, but. Um, I would, let's see, go another page. Let's see if it tells, gives us, uh, no, none of that. Keep going. Uh, Are you looking for something that is going to say like how many Apache processes it starts? What are you yeah. looking for? Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. Like max children, min spare children. Um, so oh yeah, maybe we could search for Max in that file. Or yeah, maybe. I didn't see it though. Because hmm. each one of these, each of these virtual hosts has like its own file. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it could be in there. I... I mean, I made them all, so they're all kind of similar. But the virtual host usually wouldn't specify it. Usually it'd be more of a global setting. Right, oh, okay. Uh, but maybe look yeah. at okay. that. Wait, wait, let me just write down. This is Apache two con. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, or you could just grab everything under here for the word like children. I think that's. Um, Or no, max, sorry, like max spare server. Right. No, I, that sounds familiar. Because usually I, I know like sometimes with WordPress you fix, that, but that's like within each um, within each WordPress, you, you like set max of something or another. Mm -hmm. um, not at PHP INI, I don't think. Or maybe it is. 
No, it won't be a PHP INI. So, so the PHP you're using mod PHP. So PHP is running as part of Apache. Okay. So the PHP INI doesn't have any control over what Apache does. Oh, oh, okay. So, so there's something higher up. So it's somewhere in here, like you would look for, like the. Um, max like max something workers uh or like a grep command i remember grep something <laughs> oh yeah you can do oh, a yeah. nice grep here yeah. yeah so what do i what do i how do i i don't remember the syntax i mean just grep. do like grep dash rn i'd throw an i in there for case R -N -I? sensitive like yeah, this R -N -I. sure and type max yeah, it's just type max. Just, I mean, you're probably going to get a bunch no, of things. No, but then we have to type like the name of the or file. Or servers. Code? Uh, no, nope. then you'll just type a star. You may have to type a star. Oh, just type max and then a star? Yeah. Or a dot. Um, or, a dot? Yeah. Uh, do a dot. This is safe? That, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're just crepping. That's totally safe. All right, thank you. I'm just always afraid I'm going to mess everything up. Oh, yeah. So there. So, okay. So you see it's in your. Um, uh -huh. so you have M. Oh, I see. M so this did it for the entire Apache too. Yeah. So for everything in there, I'm right? This command. This is okay. Good. So it's really like, um, so the NPM pre fork. I don't know if you which. So you might might want to look at that mods enabled. Okay, and it's the question is whether that. You have pre fork or something else or event or worker. Looks like those are your three options. Probably NPM pre fork. That's like a pretty standard. NPM pre fork is very standard. NPM. Oh, pre fork, the one at the top. Yeah. So look at mods enabled. So do like ls l mods enabled. You can, you don't have to change directory. Oh, okay, okay. Whatever. Do ls l there. So yes, yeah, so you've got. NPM pre fork in there, you don't have NPM worker and you don't have NPM event, right? So NPM pre fork, so that's fine. So the so if you cat or more that NPM pre fork conf, you'll see it says like max spare servers, max request workers. Oh, like right there, max request workers is 150. Mm -hmm, right. Is that right. That's that like, that's crazy high for oh. running one gig of on the server. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, like I would say the max total number of servers you want is probably less than 10, maybe even like five. Okay. Because you have to think about like how much memory do you have allocated to PHP? In inside Apache. Is this a question to me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, so I just follow the directions and set this up. I don't really know what I was doing. Sure. Well, does your uh, WordPress site have a PHP info page? Um, I, I think what you have to do is set one up for each site that you put up. Like, it's not, like that's not built you can in. just do it yourself. I, I did that in the beginning when I was trying to learn all this stuff, but. So Sean, WordPress doesn't have a PHP info page? Uh, not easily available, I don't think. You'd have to just make your own just, PHP info file. You kind of make your own. Or make your own like PHP file that gives you returns PHP yeah, info. Yeah, yeah, yep. Exactly. So, I mean, anyway, so I would, so do that if nothing else, uh, or check your PHP. I, your PHP INI file might also tell you, um, you know, how much memory you have. Like on the command line, it's not helpful, right? Because that's probably a different, um, a different file, a uh, different configuration for PHP. But but roughly speaking, right? You have one gigabyte of memory, a little less. Mm -hmm. um, you're not running. Are you running a database server on this, or it's separate? Um. Well, I mean, they have all the databases, right? So for each. So you're running my one has its own. It has its own database. Each um, each one of these. How many? How many up to? I'm running. 
one I have to get rid of, but we'll one, run PS dash EF one. again and let's just see. Is there is, what, which one? What is it again? PS what? PS space dash EF. PS EF. Yeah, let's just we'll Oops. just give you everything okay. right and like so you got a lot you got a two way too many Apache processes running. I you got like yeah. I don't see any a, pat, um, a database server running on there. Okay. The database. It says F MySQL. Where? Um, oh, there it is. My, my, US, MySQL. Plus D, USR yeah. has been MySQL LD. That's yeah, the one that okay. it seems to be the highest. When I look at the these reports, that's always on top. Sure. Um, so roughly speaking, so right. So that's running. So you're running a database server and you're running web server uh so you probably want i don't you know you'd have to look at your database server settings but like you probably want to give a fair amount of the memory to your database server uh okay. to the mysql d right there so you you probably want to be you know like not having more than about four or five apache processes um at a mat at the most so i mean that's why your memory is like always maxed out Okay, but what do uh, I do about it? That's I'm not really sure how to do that. How, how to? Um, you would either that. either that file you would edit or probably um, the Apache two conf. The Apache two conf you might edit or you might create your own conf file that basically overrides the conf in that npm prefork uh -huh. and lowers that number down, or you just edit the npm prefork conf. Um, you just put lower numbers in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, but it's like, yeah, the max, basically like the maximum number of things you want to have is like, um, yeah, as I said, probably like five and probably like when it's asking about like min spare servers is probably like one and number to start is like one, one or two, okay. you know, cause again, you're not, you're not expecting this little thing to handle like you know, a hundred people in parallel, like you're hope, like you're probably handling one or two or three in parallel simultaneous users making requests to the site, right? For now, yeah. I'm just wondering. So if if, if I do want, get to the point where I have more, then this this is gonna fall apart, you get right? The, well yep. then you then you or you get a CDN and put a CDN in front of it. Yeah. Okay. So maybe so I should look into doing this with a CDN. Just use Jetpack. I mean, what? like for, for what it's worth, I would just use Jetpack if you need the CDN, like they'll just give you oh, a yeah? CDN. I thought, see, I was always told stay away from Jetpack because it takes up too much something. But so that would work, you'd recommend that as a CDN? Uh, it will, it will, yeah, I forget what, at what tier it picks in. Uh, I'm looking, hold on a second. Um, this wouldn't be easy to figure out. Jetpack CDN, speed up your site. Wait, wait, before we move on, can we do something cool here with this? Um, Please. So I think you ran that PS minus EF, right? And it was like a lot of things and it went by really fast. Right. We can redirect the output of that into grep. It's that same grep command, but we can use it for this too. Okay. So if you if you do ps minus ef again and then space. Okay. And then uh, do the pipe command, which is the right. Uh, the, yeah, yeah that thing. And okay. then do grep space minus i. Let's do case insensitive again. Okay. Space and then like MySQL. MySQL. Okay. And then hit enter. So like if you knew you were looking for MySQL or something else, like what's another data, what else would a database here's, show here's, up? Here's an extra trick in there. So you also, you see, you also found your grep command. Let me just put this in here. Um, put the, like the L of MySQL in square brackets, I think. Put the L. Peter, that's a mean? great trick. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Yeah, say so that one again. Can... All right, so use the up arrow. Use the up yeah. arrow. Okay, get, get this back. Note. Put the L in square brackets. You mean here, this? Yeah, like in square brackets. Like that? Yeah, try that. Oh, what does that do? Um, I just took the other one out. Awesome. Yeah, so this is this is this is like a little obstruct I learned, you know, back in the day at Acquia, um, from from people who really knew what they were doing. Um, so the the grep command right will match certain patterns, right? Um, and the square bracket with the L in it just says match match an L at this position, right? But the fact that the square brackets are in the grep command means it no longer matches itself. Oh, okay. So you actually only match the things you care about rather than also matching the command that you're typing. Okay. Um, it's a so. nuance. This is some this is some expert <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> it's um, all good. It's all good. Yeah, and you have like a zombie Apache process too, also which is probably a zombie? Literal zombie? Yeah, it says defunct there. I, I think your 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 little thing probably needs to be rebooted. Um, um, so, so yeah, I you know so there's there's a whole process of digging into your 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 MySQL configuration and seeing how much memory you're you're trying to give MySQL. Uh, then I would look at how much basic memory yeah, that you're giving. Was one thing I couldn't do, like the bottom of it said. Um, had some the bottom of the script had my SQL commands, but I, I got permissions errors. Hmm. So I had to I, I commented it out to get the script to work. So I couldn't get the MySQL information. But the MySQL um, will be using the most um the most memory. Yeah, I would expect it is, uh, but you could probably you probably should be tuning that down. I mean, I think like DigitalOcean has probably an entire tutorial on like configuring Apache and configuring my sequel for low memory. Oh, okay. I wish they did. I mean, if they did, they didn't tell me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I actually asked them questions twice and they gave me not very good answers. Hmm. So. Um, like the second time they gave me the same answer they gave me the first time. Like I tried I asking on the community forum and. Or maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's. Um, so I basically need to, what did you call, what did you call it? Tune down? Tune down MySQL. Yeah, tuning MySQL for small server or low memory or something small like server, that. Small server, low yeah. memory, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's both PHP and MySQL. Like, so PHP, I mean, it depends on what WordPress is doing, how much memory PHP needs, right? So it doesn't run out of memory. Um, but roughly, roughly speaking, right, each of the uh, each of these Apache processes takes some memory, and then it's running PHP inside of that. Um, mm -hmm. So you basically need to figure out essentially how many processes you have space for, um, and. Um, yeah, wish yeah, I could, could take a well whole course and you... just learning how to do this. Right, it could be. It when sounds like it's either... pretty. In... There's a lot to learn. There's definitely a lot to learn. I mean, there's probably you know, ten settings that you would at most you change between all these things oh, okay. um, to get it in a more sane right. space. Um, yeah, but, but the finding... nice thing is, is that these are your sites. So if you configure it wrong, you're, you know, it's it's just your own sites. So well, I actually put one of one client who never changes his site on too, but the oh, rest of them, the rest okay. of them are my own. <laughs> uh, but the ones that are your own, you know, you can you can be like, well, what happens if I set the right? I'm know, trying to number learn. of children to like two, you know, set it. Yeah, like I see what you're low, saying. And right, then and right. then be like, and then you know, have a couple phones or like some friends, and be like, everybody use my website right now. Oh, and that's then, interesting. What have you know, a party? Everybody fun. try to crash it. 
Yeah, and then you can be like, let's change this number to a hundred <laughs> and see what happens. Oh, yeah, fine. so maybe when you see that high CPU, right, it may be that you're getting a lot of swapping or something because you're basically running out of memory. Right. Because you have all these Apache processes that are each one of them is trying to serve a PHP page. Um, and the, the better result in that case might be that instead of running out of memory or getting a high CPU that, you know, if you only had a few Apache processes running, basically the, you know, these people would basically wait in line for the next page, right? Uh -huh. So they'd wait until something was available to serve, serve their request, or they'd get an error in the worst case. Oh, interesting. You know, cause right. sometimes I go on it and it's kind of slow. And other times yeah. I get it right away. Most of the time I get it right away, but every now and then I'm editing a page and it's all of a sudden it's going slow. Right, but that's probably when, for whatever reason, there's a bunch of other people hitting the page. And, okay. you know, so that's gonna happen, you know, like it might seem slow or there might be a lag if right. a bunch of other people are making the request, but you know, there's- Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know about a bunch. A bunch meaning be like, like five, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> like three. Yeah. Like anybody else hitting it. Really? So that's pretty, no, that's pretty bad. I mean, it should be more well, than I that. Mean, uh, but that's why you're gonna, you know, you can look into the tuning and you can set it so that it won't try and serve so many people at once, you know, that like Peter said, like they would get an error or they would have yeah, to Yeah, no, but I don't really want people to get errors. They shouldn't get yeah. errors that they probably well, have to I, wait. I mean, maybe. But I would, so I would I look into the, the CDN. CDN thing. I could like, get more memory, but I want to fine tune this first. I want to know what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I would, I would actually like, if this is all public content, I would more look into a CDN, right? And you know, make okay. sure you have some way to access the site. So, I'll, aside I'll, uh, from the CDN, but then yeah. people accessing the site through through the CDN, like it doesn't even ap apply any load to your server. Right. 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 Well, I see. That's that how the CDN free, works. The CDN works effect. so that all the load is on the CDN. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And Jetpack gives you that for free. Like that's in their free Oh, field. okay. So now do I do Jetpack like per each website or do I do it? Um, yeah, you, you install site? it as a, you install it as a plugin. Okay. And then all you have to do is type in your like wordpress.com email and username, uh, username and password to authenticate it. Uh -huh. Oh, is Jetpack WordPress specific? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so far these are all WordPress because the, the other the, the sites that are just one page of HTML and not really using those are just kind of like mm -hmm. place markers. Yep. So that okay, that might solve it. So lots yeah, of no, I don't really do. want people to get errors. That's not good. No. Now here's I, like I, don't a... really, I don't want people to get error messages, but I <laughs> I still want to know how, you know, I want I want to know what I'm looking at when I look at memory. So not just feel like, oh my God, there's a whole bunch of numbers on the page. What do these mean? Mm -hmm. So let's see what, what if I had other questions. This was the, what was in here? Oh yeah, this, I couldn't get in because of the permission errors. So this was connect to server at localhost failed. And I'm thinking, I, I can't put my password in a script, right? I mean, I don't know. How, no, how but you're running. If you're running it as root, usually you don't need to, or you might have it. Um, but it might be something as goofy as this MySQL's on 127.001 instead of localhost. Hmm. But using password, no. Do you usually have to use? It's usually when I type things, when I type things into MySQL, like I, I have to type the password. So I have like, I save the password somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, there's that one. I don't know. There wasn't much else. Oh, the, this was just, uh, I guess maybe if it's been up for 91 days, I should take it down sometime. And does that make a difference? When something's been up so long? Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, like it, it can. Okay. Uh, like you, it, it, I think people who spend a lot of time with their servers, you know, really getting to know them very well and putting mm -hmm. a lot of effort into them, they may 
may take pride in the fact that their server can stay up for very many days. So they might run uptime and be like, oh yeah, 100 days. Look how <laughs> okay. good my server is. Right. Uh-huh. Or you can get people who are like, well, this server's been up for two weeks. Uh, let's just reboot it just in case. Uh -huh. like, oh, interesting. Okay. So I think it depends on like the people who are working on the servers a little bit about their personality uh, uh -huh. and also like how much time and effort and training they have. But it's, I, I mean, you can read boot a server every two weeks just because you want to. I don't think that means that like you're unusual and yeah. who knows, it might make it better. I don't know, what do other people think? Hmm. <laughs> Not enough back. Well, I mean, you should be getting <laughs> server updates and there's probably like, Linux kernel updates that come out every couple of weeks and they it's interesting because I I, so. I got I started I I it was at zero updates for a while and then when I got eight updates that night it was I had I got one of the messages that the the memory was up too high in other words like it seemed like there was that's a, a that seems like a, that seems like updates. a coincidence to me. what that's probably a coincidence. Oh, okay. See, that's what I need to know. <laughs> that's probably a coincidence. Okay. This is good. This is all good. All right. So, right. The rest of it was just more questions. Oh, I, I learned about deleting that the, they, they told me I could indeed delete my log files. Just don't, do, they said, don't delete the directories, just delete the individual files. Uh, if you're a pro, you'd set up a log rotate script, but yeah. A log rotate script so you don't have to do them yourself, right? Right. Right. Okay. Well, that, that's on my list of things <laughs> to do. So set up a log rotate script. I finally figured out how to do a, a cron job. So I'm happy about that. All right. That's about it. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Thanks, Lara. So uh, how do I do unshare? Stop sharing. Uh, I can I got it. I got it. it. All right, so uh, I'm going to give everybody a breather because that was that was a, a lot of stuff, back end stuff to take in for all you front end folks who are still on too. Um, so if there, anybody has questions, let's let's pause, do questions, discussion, and then I can do my little thing with whatever time we have. So if you've got a question, um, you know, feel free to open up your mic or pop in the chat. Give everybody a couple minutes to yeah share if they want to share. Questions if they have questions. Sean, you, you mean questions about what we just saw? Uh, questions in general, general discussion questions. Or they can ask about what we just saw and their mind being blown because he didn't never look to the server, which is entirely possible. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I, I'll just comment and say yeah, all, all these having to tweak and deal with all these configurations is yeah, one of the reasons why like uh, having having your own like virtual private server like this ends up being very time consuming um, and why people probably use a service, uh, a hosting service instead mm -hmm. <laughs> for websites. Um, so, because you could, you, you could literally spend, you know, hours and hours and hours just Tracing this down. So Ling, uh, what you just saw was essentially like us poking at the server and what settings are set up on it and how much memory and stuff it's using. So it's like real backend stuff, like uh, system administrator stuff, um, you know, to figure out where where things are going right or wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, Ying, like, what kind of computer do you use? And do you open up the terminal? And are you familiar with any of this, like, how to use the terminal on your computer? Because it's it's fundamentally the same thing. It's just whether you're doing it on the remote server or your own, like, computer sitting on your lap. The only thing I could recognize from that whole process was the 
the grab command. But other than that, I was pretty much lost. Fair enough. So being a, a you said you do React, right? Ling? Yes. So you probably don't look at that. <laughs> no, I, I use Netflix <laughs> for deployment. I do oh, yeah, not there you go. Yeah. Touch the back end yet. Back yeah. end, I mean, not not there yet. Well, I think I would say that more and more people are not touching the back end in the way that Luha is doing it for her for her site. More people are going the route of, you know, pay somebody mm -hmm. to host it for me so I don't have to yeah. think about these things. Um, because there's a lot of stuff to know, like even like, you know, just trying to remember what the command is when you don't do it every day, you know, it's a uh, you know, taxing thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, eventually I do want to learn how to do back end and I think I'm gonna learn Django as to my first back end framework once I get there. Cool. All righty. So anybody have any questions, comments, things they want to discuss, things they want to share before I jump into my little demo? I'll take the silence as no. If you do think of something and you want to just drop it in the chat, don't, don't be afraid to just drop it in the chat and then we can come back to it when, when the time comes. So I am going to share my screen. Let's see if I did it this way, it's going to be happy. I think so. All right. So I'm going to talk real quick and do a demo of this thing called Tome. Um, and essentially what it is, is a static site generator for Drupal 8, but really Drupal 9 at this point, because Drupal 8 is no longer with us, um, although it is. And so um, for those of you who don't know what Drupal is, Drupal is a PHP. Uh, based CMS, um, you know, WordPress has the biggest market share. Drupal has a pretty big market share um, in terms of like um, enterprise clients now more and more with Drupal uh, 8 and 9. And this is a, you know, a project essentially to kind of like let you use the, you know, the tool that you use maybe in your day to day for something that's not as big and complex so um is the way i would kind of think about it um but you know it could be for a whole bunch of things so it could be for like you know a client site who you know they basically you know just need to update things every once in a while they don't need a drupal site living you know needing to be updated needing to be maintained paying for drupal hosting all those kinds of things um so it's you know there's a lot of reasons why you would want something like this um or use a tool like this. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, there's you know, dozens of static site generators. Um, and, you know, I think that's becoming uh, very much a way of delivering websites, web experiences for people. So um, this is uh, specifically a Drupal one. Uh, the person who authored it, uh, a guy by the name of Sam, who's kind of a prolific Drupal person. Um, and he just did a video the other day, he put out this video, um, four years of static Drupal with Tome. So I watched this video, which I'll drop in the chat. Um, and he did a demo at the end. And I thought the demo was pretty interesting. So I thought I'd run through uh, some of the demo uh, just to kind of show you what's going on under the hood. And, you know, along with this four years, he like released a whole bunch of stuff because um, he did. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So um, essentially, you know, it's a static site generator. Um, it uses Drupal and then spits out a static site uh, is the biggest thing to think about. So I use Drupal a lot in my day to day. Um, so this is easy for me to feel comfortable with. I don't have to learn another tool set if I don't want to. You know, I have sites on Gatsby and I have an 11D site and I have a whole bunch of other random static site generator things or, you know, um, uh, other random things. So. Um, you know, this one's, you know, closer to day to day operations. So um, if you go to Drupal hyphen tome slash tome project, tome hyphen project, um, you can use this template. So this is something interesting that GitHub allows you to do is basically like 
it's not making a fork per se. It's like making like a repo underneath your uh, account with this code base. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Um, so we'll just call it like comb demo. It can be public, I don't care. So basically all that use template thing is doing is spinning up, well, generating a repo for me from that uh, template file. So that's pretty interesting. So it kind of gave me what I need. Um, and so just kind of looking at what's in here, it's a composer file. Um, so composer is a package manager for PHP. Um, and so basically it kind of describes what it is and tells you what um, requirements are there. Um, so which Sean, person, can you uh, zoom in a little? Sure. Thanks. Is that better? Uh, so, you know, just telling you what's required, um, different scripts that are there, where, where to put things, basically Drupal core should be in the web root. I mean, uh, Drupal code should be in the web root, um, which is kind of a standard thing. Um, and then some other random stuff, but very, very light, you know, not much stuff in here. Um, Tome has a bunch of stuff uh, in it, but, you know, basically this is just uh, requiring all of those packages here and I'll just bump up the font size because that's probably a better experience for people. Um, so Composer, pretty simple. Um, and there, you know, there's just some folders, nothing really crazy going on. Uh, there's this git pod file, which is something cool to show off uh, in the demo. So git pods like a um, hosted development instance um, that you don't run locally. Um, and so uh, I'll show that off, but basically this git pod file tells git pod what to do, how to get set up. Um, so running a command uh, to get set up. And there's also this netlify toml file. And this is a netlify file that basically um, you can deploy this to Netlify uh, and then it'll do what it needs to do, um, you know, to publish the HTML on Netlify. So that's what that thing's doing there. Uh, feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Uh, okay, so uh, so this is gonna show off a whole bunch of cool things and use this, this thing as a thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch Gitpod um, you'll see this probably pop up a lot more more frequently because it's pretty pretty darn awesome. Um, so you don't have to run things locally on your machine, have your machine fans running um, while you do things. Um, so what all this is doing is um, basically running this uh, git pod uh, command to get this thing started. And what I'm going to get is VS Code in the browser, essentially, is what I'm going to get. Uh, but besides VS Code in the browser, I'm actually going to get uh, a server too. So that you'll see all that running um, in a minute. So of course, going to go extremely slow because I'm on Zoom. All right. Uh, so I could open this in my local um, VS Code on desktop, or I could open up VS Code in the cloud. Um, VS Code on my desktop will have all my stuff in it. VS Code in the cloud will not have any of my plugins and things like that in it. Uh, we'll just go with the one. Okay, cancel. Oops. More actions. Open in browser. All right, so we'll open the browser one. Um, all right. Get rid of all these messages. Okay, so this color scheme is horrible. Um, let's just zoom in. Can I change my settings? Probably not. Uh, theme. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of dark themes. Mm. So that's that's easier to read. Agreed. No comments. I'll, I'll say that's true. All right. Uh, so I'll zoom it in a little bit. Uh, so basically, this all this did was run this command and basically ran composer. Uh, install so we can get all our, our stuff installed. Um, and now you'll see that we have a web folder, which we don't have in our Git repository, um, that has Drupal core in it and some modules in it, um, nothing really else. And, you know, that's just kind of straightforward stuff. Um, basically, now we have a site. Uh, so I could do, uh, what is the command? Trash run server. And if you watch that video, you'll see 
say I'm friends with this stuff too. Let's see. Oof, not happy with me. Uh, oh, I missed a step. What step did I miss? Uh, hold on one second. Uh, I think that's the command I need. <laughs> I'm just running Composer install. I'm pretty sure it's all done. I tested this all earlier and it went swimmingly. Uh, I'm missing a step. Uh, ah, welcome in. Okay, so I've got to init this thing. Uh, it's basically initializing um, comb. So if I do that, uh, I get the demo, which is the Umami Food Magazine. I get minimal, which is the minimal configuration of Drupal and standard install of Drupal, where I can hit cancel. What I could also do here is um, install this new install profile that um, Sam released with this thing called Bookish. Um, so to do that, we're going to do composer require uh, false slash bookish. Is that what we have? Let's give it a try. Uh, no, I didn't mean bookish admin. Which one did I mean? Come on. Hmm, bookish. <laughs> ah, okay, wrong thing. So composer require, it's not a, it's a Drupal tome thing, not a Drupal thing. Uh, so that name space is important. Okay, so this is basically like a, um, better out of the box tome. So out of the box, it comes with like light and dark mode. It has a whole bunch of like niceties around like image handling and um, code uh, embedding in your blog. Um, so basically it will just give us like some demo content and stuff so we can get started. And now I can do that tome in it thing. And then I'm gonna choose bookish. So we get something pretty, um, but essentially like, um, Tome, you could use anything, right? So you could use your own custom theme. You could do all this stuff. Tome is really this, these like um, pieces to, to make it a, uh, a static site out of your Drupal site. So you don't have to host your Drupal site somewhere uh, and have, you know, it served by Apache and BHP and have MySQL and all those fun processes running and dealing with them. Um, so you could just run on your local machine, just spit it out, you throw it on Netlify and, you know, sit back and relax. Uh, so I'm gonna do restaurant server, uh, server, and uh, this thing. All right, so now I've got a site. So that's gonna spin up a site with some crazy URL. That's a good pod URL. And so now here I have my tome site. So this is my tome site with the bookish theme uh, installed. So I guess thanks for a site, you know, not too much work as a starting point. Um, and so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another, uh, in Visual Studio Code, you have a terminal. So that's why I'm able to run all these like Drush commands and stuff. Uh, so Drush UI, mm, I think I have to do this. And then, so this is just giving me a one-time login link for the admin user on the site. And hopefully it works, and it did, hooray. Um, and so what um, Sam did is he created this bookish thing. And so then there's all this nice help documentation that he wrote for it. Uh, so I like how to get started with this thing. So if we want to change the site name to like NJ Web Dev, uh, a demo. 
and all this fun stuff. So this is just Drupal under the hood. So, but this is Drupal in the cloud, right? I'm not, I didn't, didn't, you know, I personally didn't spin up a server. I didn't do anything. I mean, I did because I had commands, but it's all hosted in Gitpod, and then this is hosted, you know, in anything on my on my uh, on my end really. Um, my fans are are not blazing like they normally would be if I was running a local development environment. Uh, it's a nice place to be. Um, so I can go ahead and I can save that kind of stuff. I can go back to the home page. I should see that that changed my name and it did. Um, pretty cool. So then there's like a uh, pretty standard, uh, if you blink, you might miss it, that blur up effect, which you see all over the place. Like Gatsby, I think was one of the first like uh, framework things that did that. So rather than loading, waiting for the image to load and it loading and it being, you know, taking forever to load, they load a very tiny blurry version of the thing uh, and then basically swap it out when the, the full image is ready. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, it's got this nice code highlighting uh, in it. So if you're, you know, dev and you're writing a blog and you want some nice code hi highlighting, you got that, uh, you know, and it's just kind of a nice little out of the box blogging experience. Um, this is using C Editor 5, I believe. So this is kind of cutting edge uh, Drupal stuff. So um, C Editor is a what you see is what you get editor. Um, Drupal 10 will ship with C Editor 5. Drupal 8 and 9 ship with C Editor 4. So this is actually using the new one because it kind of unlocks some things. Um, and so one of the things it unlocks is uh, his little image thing. Oh, I gotta find an image now. Uh, this is not a client project or tax documents. Oh, good. Good luck. This gotta be something. Uh, sure, we'll load this logo. Okay, so there's the logo. Uh, so um, you'll see all these cool little buttons down here, which you don't normally see in Drupal land. Uh, so if we hit edit image, uh, you know, we can pick an image style. Right, there's some standard ones here. Uh, but he's also got this cool stuff here, um, which is like, uh, this image is not a good example of what this thing does, but you know, you like your filters. So there's a bunch of filters here um, that apply different adjustments to like the brightness, the contrast, stuff like that. Um, you know, so uh, how much blurriness it has and all this other kind of stuff you can play around with. Um, let's just pick the original and then you can crop it too. So that you have like a focal point. So like, I don't want the word imagine to get cut off. So I'll pop it there. Right. And that's going to give me that image size back. Uh, and I can come in here and I can enter a caption, right? Logo. And I can float it and all the other fun things you would normally do. Provide my alt text, right? This is just nice to use a little user interface that's not standard Drupal stuff. And I can link the image if I wanted to link the image too, right? So um, cool stuff there. Um, that's kind of like you know, next Drupal um, stuff. Um, there's that code highlighting thing. So here's the code highlighting thing. You can see it, right? So if you type some PHP, yeah. Right, and I hit this little code snippet guy. That makes a nice little PHP code snippet uh, on the front end. Oh, uh, here's here's like a better example. So this is all like the default content. So if I wanted to change like the image, you know, get artsy. Um, yeah, these little things. And then there's tagging system. I'm just using some library to create cooler looking tags. Um, but you know, it's just really Drupal's back end. It's the new uh, Claro theme, but nothing, nothing too crazy there. Um, and then um, just kind of looking here. Um, so you edit your content with Bookish, right? So you use or five, it has this little image widget, right? Um, all this nice little documentation is inside this thing. Oh, so much documentation. Um, so then you have this deploying, right? So 
hosting with Netlify. So you can just spin it up on Netlify. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the documentation of Tome, how to do that, because it has that Netlify TOML file. Um, right, and there's some other random things in here. I can probably deploy this to Netlify if I wanted to. And then the other thing I'd say is like, there's a, there's a sub theme and you can just override the, um, the CSS variables. Um, so this is something like front end wise, you'll see more and more. Um, if you're learning front end stuff, you know, now and not 10 years ago, um, you know, these things didn't exist. So basically this is a way of like declaring at specific levels variables to use within your um, within your CSS. And so um, if you're familiar with SAS, like you would put these as like colors that you would import um, and then you would use those things and you would compile the SAS. Now you can do that kind of stuff natively with, um, with CSS. Um, so that's cool stuff. So if we wanted to change the theme rather quickly, I can just actually, this is, this is kind of like the fun, fun thing. It's like, so since this is VS Code, right? I can just come over here, pop open profiles, pop open bookish sub theme, give myself a copy on that. I'm gonna throw that in my themes folder. And I'm gonna call it NJ Web Dev. And in there, I have my main CSS file. So you can see here, there's like prefers color scheme dark and dark and then regular body. And then I can throw all these other ones in here if I want to override them, which I will show you what that looks like. And then these things I just got to rename to be that folder name, J web dev. It's like, and same thing here, J web dev. There's a faster way of me doing this, I'm sure. Uh, and then the only thing here, I'll just change the name. So it's consistent. So this is just me making a custom theme for this thing uh, without using the, the base one. Okay, cool. Uh, so now if I go back to the Drupal site and I go into the admin side of things, uh, I can make, where's my theme? NJ Web Dev, install, I can set default. And in my GitHub instance, what I'm gonna do is over here, I'm gonna make like a horrible color choice. Uh, so I have a dark color scheme on, uh, uh, what's a good named variable? Oh, I don't have all my code completion here. Uh, let's just call it green, Steve green. Uh, so if I save that, come back here and look at my homepage, I have this nice horrible green homepage, right? And if I want to change that again, I can come in here, say, you know what, I want dark green. I think dark green is the name variable. So I have to remember hex colors. Oh, it is, because it gave me a little box at times. Oh, uh, it's not happening. Did I save it? Oh, I think I hit the cache, so. Ah, the buttons aren't working the way I want them to. Where's my terminal? I lost my terminal, sorry. Uh, did I just lose it because I zoomed in? It was here. We all saw it. I, I think you can clear the cache in the UI. I could. I'm trying to be fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. I'll do it. The, I'll do it the old way. Well, Press I mean, just because we never do it this way, it's like I know. You know, maybe people don't know. Yeah, so we hit clear cache. Maybe just maybe the color changed. Okay, it got darker. Good. Okay, maybe I like that better. I don't like the fact that this thing is you know left aligned. I mean, right aligned. It's probably a setting in here somewhere. Um, oh, geez, all this stuff. It's just if I click and that doesn't do it. Ah, using all the all the latest and greatest. So CSS grid. Right. 
why is this not aligned the way I want it aligned? Grid column one through eleven. One through three, one through five, one through six, something. You got it looking better. Anyway, so I could come in here, I could find all this stuff, uh, and then I could go in and start you know, hacking, hacking away and making this my own. Pretty cool. Um, the thing I will say is because this is SAS project, it uses this kind of um, non standard uh, way of doing themes that he talked to our group about quite some time ago, which is it uses components. Uh, so if you're familiar with like Vue.js, um, these things are called .f .sfc, which are called single file components. So there's a template, there's a style tag. Uh, you can also have script tag in here if you needed it. But basically like all of these little bits and bobs of the, of the like overall theme, you would have to like copy these things out and then you can modify them. So like if I didn't like the naming convention or something or I wanted to control the CSS, the CSS is actually tightly coupled with the, with the template. So um, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and, and, you know, not a, not a standard Drupal way of doing things, but um, it's cool that it works. And yeah, so, uh, you know, the last thing I could do is obviously save my changes. Uh, if I could find my terminal. Uh, there's the terminal. There it is. Say. Hey. Uh, so. Um, I would type that wrong, but whatever. Push. Is it happy? No, it's not happy. Doesn't have access control to do this. Uh, just, uh, sure. I just, all right, so now I should have all the things to do. So let me try that again. And I do. Cool, cool. Come back to GitHub where I had this thing. Go back to my Tome demo. And you see, I just made a commit one minute ago. I typed Tome wrong, but you know, now this is here, cool. And I can do all the other things. So, like, there's other stuff like here Tome, tome statics, generate the static site, download the static site, preview the static site. Um, Tome sync, so this would like synchronize the files, um, remove unused files, like, tries to do like orphaned image cleanup, things like that. Um, uh, so this Tome static thing, so I could hit generate static site. Uh, so maybe this form will initiate. Uh, build of all uncached static pages using the site, existing files in the static export directory, we overridden. So you're smash domain name on where the site's gonna be deployed. Uh, I don't know where it's gonna be deployed. This I build, go here to generate one. Whatever, we can go through that kind of stuff. And then Lunar, uh, this search thing is pretty neat. So it's a JavaScript uh, search for your static site. Uh, here, oh, come on. I have you got it. So if I hit search, I'm not allowed to be here. I don't know why. Is it not turned on? I think it's turned on. Mm. It's there. So let me just go to the demo site uh, for Tome. Mm -hmm. That's the push demo. 
where the search works. Right, so you come in here and you type in moose. Right, it's going to find your content, which is pretty neat. Right, so this is static content that it's finding against. And I can take this off and just say, give me all the tags, the nature, stuff about hiking. And so you can see how this is like neat. It's a neat little project. It you know, doesn't have a lot of traction just yet, but you know, you can see how this would be, you know, if somebody's doing Drupal or wants to dip their toe in, but not, you know, really, you know, have a big site, you know, this would be a cool way to do it in a more modern uh, approach. Uh, so I thought that was neat. And so that's why I wanted to share it with y'all. And we'll go from there. Uh, I don't know if I can push this out. So deploy to Netlify. So if I turn on that module, now I can deploy to Netlify with this button. Uh, come Netlify has not been created. You're going to enter your Netlify credentials. Some static build exists, right? So there's a couple of steps I need to do to get Netlify deployed. But yeah, something simple, easy to do. And then, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you can just throw this thing away and you're off and running to the next uh, iteration of it. Um, so um, I think it's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn this off. So I don't use all my free minutes. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's Tome, Gitpod, and a whole bunch of other random fancy things uh, in a couple minutes. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, that'd be cool. Um, and otherwise, um, yeah, we'll just open it up for discussion the last few minutes. Thanks. I agree, Kathy, Kipod is the future. I have oh, yeah. a question, Sean. Yeah. So like you turned off, you you, turn, you shut that down the virtual server that GitHub started, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you decide now you don't want a dark green background, mm -hmm. no, that that's not a good example. Let's say you <laughs> wanted um, to change the site name. Mm -hmm. Do you just like start up that Git pod and it like remembers what was in your database? Uh, let's find out. <laughs> My guess is that's what that Tome Sync thing's about and I didn't do it before I shut it down. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just like, do you have to make your website like in one go? Uh, you shouldn't have to, right? Shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> oh gosh. And you don't okay. even need a local. This is just so amazing. <laughs> and it goes much faster when you're not on Zoom, I swear. Like half the time. So we'll find out eventually. Uh, yeah, Michael, yeah, that's a good point. You can, uh, um, no action, let's open the browser. Uh, you can go to github.dev and does this similar thing. Uh, uh, listen to this port. That time it did what it thinks it's supposed to do, I think. Uh, so you said if I, well, you just said if, what happens if I do trash run server. Well, I guess let's see if this spun up, if it's still there with the change. All right, so, so my site title is still there. So that's cool. I don't know how long that persists, but that is there. Uh, okay, now this front block is another piece of config. Yeah, it's I guess totally let me, still let, there. Let me add another blog just to see. Will this disappear? Question mark. Published. All right, and then. Like if I did this tome sync thing to synchronize content files, by submitting this form will import all changed tome content files. Your local site's content files will be deleted or updated. No content has been changed or deleted. I don't know, I don't know what that means then. Okay, so I don't think that's the issue. Uh, so then 
if I go back to Git pod and turn this puppy off. All right. Stop. Okay, the site shouldn't be there anymore. Oops, unhappy, bye. And I started again. Just trying to open VS Code. Uh, so that that thing where it's trying to open my own VS Code on my local machine is a setting in Gitpod. You can tell it what to do. Uh, like, or if you don't use VS Code, it can open up other things. Uh, right, so now that's there again. Okay, still running. It did not disappear. So it must be like making a, making a, making a, a like static or making like a snapshot of the thing so I can bring it back online. Right? <laughs> Maybe it would yeah. be worth it to try again, like, you know, 12 hours from now or tomorrow just yeah. to verify it's still around but yeah that's really cool i i doubt it will persist that long right so if i hit download what do we got uh what does download give me oh my gosh the heck is that uh a whole bunch of nonsense that i don't care about uh yeah i don't know uh what was that call disappear this is gonna be a word that's standardly in Oh, hey, Sean, we can't see that window that you're seeing. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, content. Content is this. How do you spell disappear? Why is you spelling it wrong? Oh, so yeah, so here's the interesting thing. So let me do new share. Let me share my whole desktop, everybody. Sure. All right. Uh, so in that um, GitPod file that it downloaded, which is this crazy thing, it actually has JSON data for this. Wait, package. hey, Sean. Yeah. We Can can't not see, see it. You're... No, oh, we're just on. seeing workspaces. Come on, share, share, share. Why will you not share this desktop? We share. Because you have to click in Zoom real. I have to click slow. the share button like five times. Okay. Yeah. So now, so here's here's this. Here's some JSON. Uh, will this content? Uh, will this disappear? Right. So will this disappear? It's in some JSON blob in this like random file that I downloaded off of um, GitPod. So I guess as long as that workspace persists, this is the state that it'll be stuck in. Now that seems like some black magic to me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a tone thing. I don't know if that's a, just how this is represented in the database. According uh, to some docs that I'm reading, it yes. says um, uh, Gitpod backs up the state of the slash workspace folder between workspace starts. Okay. Unpinned workspaces will have be inactive, be automatically deleted. Okay, so like oh, there's some there persistence, go. but that, not that much. Go. Fourteen days. Yep. Wow, Unless I that's pin amazing. It. So I can just pin it, and then I won't do that. <laughs> like this one, I don't need. This is the one I did earlier, so I can get rid of that one. Um. But yeah, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> And I know that there's like uh, there was like a Twitch stream or something where the people from Lando used GitPod instead of running Lando locally, which was like ah oh, all the all the like you know spin up a Pantheon in GitPod um, and then do all your work, but not on your local machine. So it seems it seems very much like that's that's the next 
you know, a good progression of where things will go. So, you know, again, lowers the barrier to entry, right? Like, I don't need to know all this stuff. I could just hit the button, I get a thing. And then it opens up a lot of uh, opportunities there for more people to get interested and start hacking away at things. All right, we got about 10 minutes left. If anybody's got something to share, a question. I found something interesting today that I could share. This is sure. for WordPress though. Oh, that's fine. All right. I was um, downloading Master Slider. This is for WordPress. And I noticed that it had a banner promoting a new slideshow uh, plugin at the top of their page called Depictor. And what looks really interesting is that it's responsive and you can go into different, say like uh, from desktop view to mobile view, rearrange the uh, the components and it will stay that way. So you can um, have the same objects, but recompose them into say like tablet width or, or mobile width. I'll, I'll put the uh, URL in the chat. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I installed it in NAB today. I really didn't have a chance to take a, a good look at it, but it looks very interesting. I'll probably look at it in the next day or so. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you know, this this looks like the, the interface of it, at least in the screenshot, looks very similar to like a lot of these like low code, no code things um, where they all end up looking like Adobe products. Like this very much has a feel of like an Adobe product with the, the two panels and stuff like that, in some weird way, you know, but it looks, you know, it's cool. Cause it's like, you know, you can make these really fancy things without knowing how to do them and have them be just right for, from a marketing perspective, like a designer perspective. Um, so it has not hit the, it has not hit the WordPress plugin depository yet. So it's very new. Hmm. Cool. So the other company is basically saying, don't use that one anymore, use this one? Well, they didn't say that, but uh, they may suggest that at some point, yeah. Master Spider will go away. Very cool. Well, we got a couple more comments. Oh, Victor. Oh, they, thanks for sharing that, Levi. I saw Lando and Get Pod thing. All right. If nobody else has something to share or ask about, um, well, I guess we'll part ways for the night. Yeah, one well, of the things I'm beating my head on are cores decided to do something weird. Um, one thing uh, just interesting when we were upgrading to Drupal 9 from 8, uh, a lot of the, getting this huge pile of messages where uh, the upgrade was removing all permissions that didn't, weren't currently defined. Um, and uh, just be aware that that's uh, no longer basically supported uh, assigning arbitrary permissions, which we were doing basically assigning permissions for modules that weren't yet enabled. Mm -hmm. um, and Drupal doesn't want you to do that anymore. Good to know. Um, yeah. And currently annoyed by the fact that field item plugins don't support dependency injection, as well as entity types not supporting entity dependency injection. So. We should talk about the new uh, per bundle classes, maybe in a future meetup.
Have yeah. we talked about that? Um, we may have mentioned it. Hmm. Did you see that, Kathy? No, I've uh, I haven't been around in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was mentioned on the Lullabop blog, so I thought you would have seen it there. Uh, I've I've been having some stressful times, so I've been really <laughs> dialing back my yeah you know, exposure to keeping up with things. Hmm. So, nope, haven't seen it. But uh, I did make it tonight, though. So, you know. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thought they, yeah, anyway. Yeah, we should talk about that. I don't know if anyone's really using it, using it yet. Yeah. Okay. And if anybody does have like something they want to hear about or share in the future, by all means, leave some messages in Meetup or you can find us in Drupal Slack channels. That's where we all lurk uh, for the most part because um, a lot of us are Drupal people if you didn't catch that. Um, but uh, yeah. Thanks for coming out. I joined late. What's going on with the camp? Uh, we didn't talk about the camp. Uh, it's supposed to be the 27th. We're having some fiscal sponsor fun. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, we'll probably work that out. Yeah. So we'll we'll somehow <laughs> get organized for a, a call for session soon. I think the the basic the basic idea is everything's going to happen more or less on one day. Um, maybe we'll have a. Um, contribution day before or after or the day before maybe a get ready for the camp and contribute if you have time uh day i think we've decided but um mm -hmm. it's kind of narrow, narrowing down the scope just so we have something we can we can pull off um it does seem like yeah the university is going to host it we have the space reserved so um but yeah lots lots to do there okay. yep Thank you. All righty. Talk to you all next month. Okay. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank Good you. Night. Thanks. Bye.